Luke Hodge here. I haven't got the tripod mount, mount before you say this video is very sh shaky because it hasn't arrived yet. But this is sort of a, like a home network improvement part one because I'm not using the cardboard. One seems it's not safe having a sort of electrical sort of stuff in cardboard boxes. So wood cutting hobby boxes. You can see my dad's body cutting it out. Filing out the hose though, but you can do that to yourself. As you see, my dad's only cut the hose. Can you turn around and show them? So you just cut a hobby box and do it like that. This is how you cut out before. File it, should fit in. The same with your switch and your two plugs like that. <laughs> but yeah, he's just going to fish you off the other pair. But basically, when you make your hobby box, so it's always good to have some holes in. So Make some holes in your normal hobby box, as you can see. One, two, three, four. Five. You can put how many you want. You can put some at the bottom, but I'm just going to do it at the top today. But it's always good sometimes because sometimes some hobby box can have a sort of seal inside, so it sort of like makes it a bit like seal. And then if any of the wires got hot, it had no air to breathe. So it's always good just in case that if it does seal up the box, um, it's good to have some holes in the top to let. Especially if you have electronic stuff going in there, it's good sometimes to have some sort of, you know, air slots like with your root and some things have vents. Like example, your UV box, I always have holes and that's why this would have holes just in case there was, you know, some sort of frying um, difficulty. So that's basically, that's what it is. As you see, I haven't got my cover with me. The reason is um, I bought a cover with the top of a red and a clear bag is that's how I wanted it um, off eBay for seven pounds but then it, the corner just snapped off and I can't be bothered anymore so uh, with that because it's just basically broken it doesn't last for long so I'm just going to get a plain c cover but just the screen out in veil but you know but anyway the home network improvements part especially with doing this hobby box I think I probably won't call it home network improvement it'll be probably how to make a hobby uh, Ethernet switch, but you never know. But the time you see this, if you can tell if I do call it how to make a Ethernet switch, you'll definitely know it's meant to be in part of the home network improvements, or it's going to be replacing the cardboard one that I'll do. I'll show you in a moment when I've finished the product. As you'll see, you'll see the finished product. But yeah, all you need is drill the hose and then cut out with a pair of cutters. Uh, one thing though, you're going to need the plugs, my dad's got the other one, but you're going to need two of these plugs uh, and you're going to need some ethernet cable, uh, very simple, and you're going to need, hold on, as you see my sister's watching TV, sucking up on like a big baby, <laughs> and if you come up here into my room, as you see, it's going to replace that. But you're going to also need to get crimp the wires in there. You're going to need a special, like, telephone. They also use for these for telephone line, but a telephone line to, like, Ethernet adapter. As you see, that's my dad trying, um, filing it. He's got his little clamp thing in the middle. But, yeah, that's one thing you're going to need. So, yeah, I think that's everything. And I'll turn the camera back on when he arrives inside with the finished holes or well, they should be all finished but you know i'll show you when it the next step is when we carry on with this process anyway i'll see you there okay guys one thing i didn't mention though is with the crimping toys when you come up to the line you got a uh, these um two um pinches here come on focus this is selfie cam so it's not going to be that good as the other one, but anyway, you'll have two lines there, as you see that you can see the pins there, that one there, and then that one there. You want it to line that into the plug, you'll find your way, but there'll be more focused videos if you just say how to crimp it in and how to install a wall outlet, they'll show you how to do it. But um, you just want to get the plug, basically if I had the plug up, you got to insert the way, you got to insert your way in. And then when you do that, you just got to push it in, you'll hear a click like that. But when this moves, so I'll show you. But anyway, when you click it in, it'll make that sound when you've done it. But as you see, you got to get this end then. The bit where it's got the hole there, when you press that down, 
it cuts the end wire off at the end, so you gotta just swear that if you do that the wrong way, I think at one point I could do it the wrong way, and you could end up chopping and shortening your wire. But sometimes some of them will slip, but this one seems to doesn't, so it's a good branded one. But just you to be aware of that. That's how you use the um, crimping device and how you insert it into the um, plugging unit. But anyway, uh, I'm still waiting for my dad to return, but we'll see you there. Sometimes though, you've got to file some of the um, holes, because sometimes your appliances like that little hole there that my dad's filing is the switch hole, and it won't just fit in. So you, so you just got to file your way around uh, to get it to fit. you just got to do a bit of filing and a bit of adjustments. But when you've done that, though, you... Um, as a testament, you should be able to guess it in if it, you just gotta often go back. What? Test. What test. Testament? You just gotta test it, and sometimes you gotta take bit bit off by time. To, don't go mad though, because sometimes you can make the hole too big. So just work your way around, and you should make the holes big enough to make all your appliances fit. But anyway, I'll show you when it's finished. As you see, after a bit of fiddling around and a bit of filing. As you see, it all fits in well. You just got to push and fiddle in a bit, but as you see, it all fits well, nice and flush. All you need to do is just insert your fingers in. Sometimes you know you even have plugs, but apart from that, um, it should be very simple. If they if they don't all both in, you just find which bit you plug. You don't have a problem with. You just plug them in. Uh, do you want to the other way? Yeah? Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. As you see, you just push them in. Sometimes they can be a fiddle, some bits need filing. As you see, some of them will stick out though, but you can hot glue them in if they're a bit wobbly, but it all depends. In fact, do we want to do one at a time? As you okay. see. You hold them flush and all that. As, as you see, they're very easy to do. Press them in. Uh, yeah, do you want to do that both ways? Well, you make sure they're pressed in as far as they'll go. No, they're, they're pushed in as far as they go. As you see, we're just adding. If you can see or not, um, we're adding the hot glue to hold them in place. You don't want to go too mad, as I did with my first one, as you see. In the like, that. Oh, like that, yeah. As I did in the cardboard one, um, as you see, I put a ridiculous amount of glue and then on the top, and then when it started to dry, as you saw, it made a big mess. As I sh showed how I couldn't use the other plugs before. And how and why I had to go out to um, Chester buy to buy some new ones, but as a part of it, it, it was a good experience. So it was a bit of a story though when buying them, as I did, they did look a lot a bit smaller than the others, but they weren't. What they, do you think? It just concerned me though, so I did end up going to the Chester for a second time, and that was quite the funny part of it. But it was all worth it though, because it was a good fun experience. As you see though, you can just tidy up the string, yeah, I know, if you want to glue them, but, it doesn't. but as you see though, after you glue them in, you just got to let them dry, as you see this one doesn't need any glue, because this one's holding the switch holds in pretty good, it's just sometimes these often need the, um, switch, the Ethernet um, sockets often need gluing, because sometimes they won't often have a good fit, so sometimes, but anyway, sometimes it's good to put hot glue, but if they're all fully secure, it's they should be fine, but as you see, some of them may need hot glue. But as you see, then um, of course um, we'll do the wiring bit. But I think we'll do that in the house. But of course we're going to have to spice in, so we will have to come back out here, probably to solder um, the two wires together to the switch seams of that. But apart of that, when it all works out, it should be working great. But apart from that, this is sort of all done at the moment until we move on to the next step. So anyway, just see you in the next bit. Finished product. No, I'm just kidding. But we haven't even finished doing the wiring yet, so let's get to business. I just want to continue the wiring. As you see, I've already crimped some of them down, but the art that not the white and orange stripey one, but just the orange cable you want to spice into to your switch. But apart from that, you just got just join the rest the rest of the wires as normal with your crimping with your crimping tool. As I already showed you how to use it, you just carry on doing that, and then when you do it, you want to chop that in half, strip the ends, and then join into the switch. You may need some extra wires if it's not long enough, or you've got some distance. Especially like this one here, this one's quite, this one was, the old one was quite long, so I need to extend the wire, but we may get away with this one, but 
I don't think so, especially not this end, but that one, we'll probably get to that, but you'll see. Anyway, I'll finish the rest and then I'll show you then what you've got to do in the next step. You need to do some soldering to join these wires together. So, um, I'm going to be doing that. As you see, we got the old soldering iron. You see, we're just going to sold tint those wires, as you see there, and the switch. And then the other one. As you see, we just tinted both of those. Um, well, let's just do the other wires, the extension ones to get them both to the switches. And after we've done that, we can just um, screw the box together and then plug it in upstairs and test it out. And just in case it there was a problem, I'm going to plug it into my laptop to test it out first. <laughs> Something's on here. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it's right there as soon as I know. Right, right. I'm doing it. Yep, that's what you're doing now. You don't mind if I could do some soldering? Yep. Oh, no, the solder didn't get on that. Oh, yeah, yeah we got it. Okay. Right, you have to put that down there. You're going to swap over? I'll take that. I don't know. As you see. Oh, wow, this is a different one. It weighs a lot heavier than the um, other unit. Hold on a sec, just going to bend these wires around. Uh, yeah. This is when I tried to, when I first tried to do soldering doing it one end and I only burnt my finger off. Ah. Okay, and then you have a... Come out, come out, warm enough. There you go. There you go, that's one wire. Just get the other one. And after this one, we should be done. Well, hopefully. Yeah. There we go, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I've got further. There we go, I think those are. Yep, there we go. As you see, we just welded that. Should I turn it off now? Yeah. There we go. Right, yeah, this. Yep. I'll back off. It's tight squeezing it. <laughs> As you see, we just soldered that. Mm, got the cap now. Switch off. Okay, and we'll see all the soldering, as you saw. And the job is done. But I've just found out a problem, though. When I came to plug it in, something in the switch is broken because it does not fling back like this. Look. So, and sadly, I don't have another switch left, so I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow until I can get another one. <sighs> but that's how you make a switch, so. But there's only anyway, guys, that's how you make an Ethernet switch. But anyway, please comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next video. Bye. Ah!